Hello class, today is the day we are going to be jelly plate printmaking. This is the masterpiece we will be creating. Since it's the fall season, we are going to be creating leaf prints. These are called mono prints. Mono prints means one print. As you can see, we have these really cool looking jelly plates. You will be allowed to touch them a little bit, but you are not allowed to pick them up. You will not want to use your fingernails to touch them either. This tool is called a brayer. It kind of looks like a paint roller. At your table, you may see a tray with this black stuff on it. This is block printing ink. Yes, I said ink which means if this was to get on your clothes, it would stain it. So it's important that you push your sleeves up and not touch your clothes. Up here, I like to call that the river, and down here is the land. You never wanna flood your land. You just wanna water it a little bit by dipping your brayer in the river and then rolling it onto the land. Notice how I pick up the brayer for each roll. It's important to do this so it fully coats every side of the brayer. Make sure you stay away from the river as you are rolling in the land part of the ink tray. Listen to this sound. Did you hear the stickiness? That tells you that you're ready to start rolling onto your jelly plate. Notice that I'm going in different directions to fully coat the jelly plate. You do not want to put too much ink onto the jelly plate or your print will not turn out correctly. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to use these leaves and place them onto the jelly plate. It's very important not to overlap the leaves. We want to give them some space and fully fill our composition. Try to make sure it's somewhat balanced as well. There, that looks much better for mine. I'm ready to make my first print, but first I need to put my name on my paper. If you have not done this, this is such an important part because it's easy to mix your paper up with somebody else's. Now I'm ready to print. When you are printing, you hold down with one hand and rub with the other hand. You never want to pound the paper. Look at that print. Print number one is complete. We're ready to move on to what I like to call the ghost print. Ooh. We are going to remove those leaves and then with a second paper, print again. Notice that I did not add more ink to my jelly plate. Wow, look at that ghost print. What an amazing masterpiece. We need to keep both of these pages. All right, now we're ready to draw our pumpkin with our oil pastels. Hopefully you have picked out a print from one of your ghost prints that you would like to use for this project. I would like for you to use a pencil to draw just in case you make a mistake and need to erase. This video is going to appear to be very long, but I'm going to keep it in real time because there's so much I want you to see. So we're going to begin by staying within the frame of your print and we're drawing like a giant hill. I started to notice that you can't really see this, so let me switch to oil pastel. You keep using your pencil though. Okay, so let's do this again. Now that you can see what I'm drawing, I'm using a black oil pastel, you're using a pencil, and we're gonna draw like this pickle shape. All right, I know what you're thinking. Mrs. LaFrenz, this is not a pumpkin. 
And you're right, it's a piece of a pumpkin. So we're gonna draw each bump individually. And so the second bump is going to be taller than the first centered one. That way we can add the little stump area where the vine was connected to the pumpkin. We're gonna mimic that same thing on the opposite side. Notice how they both curve inward. This one just kind of fell off the edge, but notice how I just stopped drawing when it falls out of frame. Now that we have this step completed, we're ready to draw the stump. Watch carefully how I do this. I'm gonna start on one side of the pumpkin and it's gonna be like a ramp that I draw, but they're not gonna meet together. So there's my first ramp. And then I'm gonna leave like a gap, as if like a bike was to have to ramp and jump the gap. But now we're gonna put a little oval shape in there to make it look like the vine was snipped off. It gives it that three-dimensional look. To complete the pumpkin, we need to add two little bumps in the background. That is the view of the backside of the pumpkin. And now we're ready to start coloring with the oil pastels. You will want to trace your pencil lines with either a black or dark brown oil pastel. Once you have completed that step, we're going to begin coloring with an orange oil pastel. This is just like you would color in a coloring book. Just be careful with the edges of the pumpkin. You cannot color side to side all the way across the pumpkin because the oil pastel would smudge. As you can see, I am just filling the areas of the pumpkin fully with the orange oil pastel. Just be careful with those lines that you traced earlier. Like I said, they can smudge pretty easily. I will give you this time to color your picture as I am also coloring mine. almost completed hopefully you are as well the next step that we are going to do is using a yellow oil pastel to add a highlight to our picture be careful not to rub your hand too hard on your picture so that it does not smudge the oil pastel you can lightly brush some of those little pieces off as I started working on this, I was noticing that that yellow wasn't popping out much. And maybe you're thinking of the best solution. And I had decided that I would use a white oil pastel to brighten those areas first, 
then go back in with my yellow. That's just going to lighten the area so that the yellow will pop out easier. These areas are going to be on the top pieces of the pumpkin where the sun may be hitting them. We're not going to do it on the bottom half of the pumpkin. And notice if I bring it down, it's going to be on the left side if it's on the left side of the pumpkin and on the right side if it's on the right side of the pumpkin. Once you get those areas brightened up, you can take your yellow oil pastel and blend that in. Look how smooth these go together. I'll let you do this step as I'm working. I have completed my highlight, so hopefully you are pretty close to being completed as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this oil pastel before I put it back into the box. Here is the next step. We're gonna take the brown oil pastels and this is going to be adding the shadow areas where the sun maybe isn't as bright on the pumpkin. This is going to create more of that three-dimensional look. I used the light brown on my last project, so I went with a different color this time just to see what it would look like. Any of the browns that are available will work perfectly for this project. So this brown is going to be on the bottom part of the pumpkin where it's closest to the ground. Notice that I'm not going very far up on the picture. I'm just working on blending that brown into the orange tone, staying close to the very bottom of the pumpkin. Once you complete that step, we can then go further into adding the, this depth to our pumpkin. So this is the center of the pumpkin. Anything on the right side of the pumpkin, we will add a little bit of this brown tone on the right side of the curve of that line. So mine was a black line, you may have a brown line. So if it's on the right side of the pumpkin, you will color on the right side. If it's on the left side of the pumpkin, you would color on the left side of the line. Hopefully that makes sense. Raise your hand if you are a little confused or ask your art teacher in training to clarify more. I would be happy to help you as long as you have already asked your art teacher in training for assistance. I'm also using the oil pastel to blend that line that I had drawn into the pumpkin so it looks a little bit more smooth. Oil pastels kind of remind me of paint, how well they blend together. All right, I am completed with the shadow areas, but if you're not, you keep working. I noticed I had missed a few spots on the top of my pumpkin and wanted to fill those in. You can also do the same if you miss those. Just keep in mind, if it's towards the top, it should be with the yellow oil pastel. If it's towards the bottom, it should be with your darker brown oil pastel. All right, I think I'm ready to move on. So we're ready to do the stump part of the pumpkin. But after looking at my pumpkin, I realized I wanted to add a little bit more of a brighter highlight. 
If you feel the same way, go ahead and grab your white oil pastel and just etch in some of that towards the top of your pumpkin. Remember, the light parts are on the top of the pumpkin, the darker parts are on the bottom part to add those shadows. I also wanted to kind of darken up the bottom because it looked a little light in my opinion. Maybe your pumpkin looks just fine, but I thought because of the brown tone that I used, I needed a little bit more darkness. So you could use the dark brown or the black oil pastel, but if you already used the dark brown or the black oil pastel, you're probably good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use this dark brown for the stem here because I think I used the lighter brown on my previous project and I like to make it look a little different. So just like a coloring book, you're just going to color within the lines as neatly as you possibly can using that good craftsmanship. Remember, craftsmanship is the quality of design and work shown with something made by hand. Once that part is filled in, we're going to add in a little bit of highlights. We're going to use that white oil pastel again. And we're going to mix in a little yellow, or you could even mix in a little green. So beginning first with that white oil pastel, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of highlight and texture to the stump. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just to add it add some other color to it other than just this flat brown color. So let me show you what it would look like if I used the yellow. And then I'll also show you what it looks like with the green. And maybe you want to include both, which is what I ended up doing and I thought it turned it out pretty good. So There we go. I really like the way this turned out. Now I'm ready to move on. Um, this is pretty good looking to me, but I wanna add some vines. It always gives it that really nice extra touch to it. And I like to use a green oil pastel for that. Now I used kind of the um, army type green, that olive green color but this time I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and do the other tone of green because I want the pictures to look a little bit different. So there's no right or wrong way. It's just adding some swirls. My only comment would be to leave a little space towards the top where we can add that word fall. We are almost done. Let's choose a color to write our word fall. Now, I don't mind which color you use, but um, I know I used red on my last one. So this time I decided to use green. When you're writing fall, you can write it however you want in your own fun style or text. I just made mine all caps, but maybe you wanna make this really pretty cursive writing or you just wanna write it like in your normal handwriting style, go for it. It is your style of writing. Once you have completed this step, your project is complete. We're ready to clean up our area and make sure those oil pastels get placed back into the appropriate areas. You all know how picky I can be about keeping those oil pastels nicely organized. It's also going to keep them really clean and fresh for the next group to use. So using a white color pencil, if your picture was very dark printed, um, mine was lightly printed, so I decided I needed to use a Sharpie. So if yours is lightly printed like mine, maybe use a Sharpie. If yours is dark printed, you would use the white oil pastel. Once this is completed, go ahead and um, give them to me and we will get them matted and hung up and put on Art Sonia. Awesome job. I hope you loved this project as much as I love this project.